In this fourth video in Lesson 1, we will be discussing the basic economic principles of a free enterprise system. Specifically, we will go into greater detail on how the market economy works given the role of freedom that we discussed in the previous videos in this lesson. So we ask the basic question, how does the market economy work? First, goods and services are exchanged based on the voluntary decisions of individuals pursuing their unique desires. Three features of our world govern this exchange process. The first is scarcity. Decision-making is based on the limited availability of all resources, including our time and goods and services. The second is incentives. There are rewards and penalties that motivate behavior, and people respond to incentives in predictable ways. We'll talk in a minute how Gus responds to incentives in starting his pie business, but you and I respond to incentives in many areas of life. In the free enterprise system, we have very clear incentives in terms of responding to, say, sale prices when we buy the things that we desire. And finally, institutions. As discussed in the previous video, institutions are the rules that govern us. Both the laws and contracts for exchange to take place must be defined and clear for there to be an environment of certainty for people to engage in trade. A buyer must know what he is getting from a seller with as few surprises as possible, and the right institutions ensure this type of exchange. The second feature of a free enterprise system is the price system. Prices are a means of resource allocation. That is, through prices, a free enterprise system directs resources toward their highest valued use. Without free and unregulated prices, that is, prices that are set by markets and not the government, a free enterprise system does not work. The price system is the means by which knowledge is aggregated or summed up and communicated globally about the relative scarcity and value of all resources. For example, if you purchase a berry pie from Gus for $8, that price communicates information to you, the buyer, on the value of all the ingredients within the pie and the labor used to bake it. More importantly, this price communicates essential information to the producers or potential producers of pies on the quantity of resources that should be dedicated to producing pies and desserts more generally. And finally, prices help all market participants to calculate opportunity costs or the highest valued alternative use of any resource. All costs are opportunity costs meaning the cost of a resource as expressed in the price determines how resources should be used and when resources are used for one purpose berries for pies for example then the same resource cannot be used for another purpose say berries for jam or think of the aluminum can that is used to make a can of soda the cost of one ton of aluminum can be used to make say 10,000 coca-cola cans this can be expressed as the alternative cost for, say, 20,000 rolls of baking foil. So prices are an essential feature in the crux of a free and voluntary exchange process. The third feature of the free enterprise system, linking closely with prices, is the interaction of supply and demand. Consumers in a free enterprise system are represented by the law of demand, and this law states that there is an indirect or opposite relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity demanded that consumers desire to purchase. As the price rises, the quantity demanded will fall. Suppliers, on the other hand, are represented by the law of supply. This law states that there is a direct relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity suppliers desire to sell. As the price rises, the quantity supplied increases. So as the price of berry pies rises, for example, Gus desires to produce and sell more. When we combine these laws, we represent them graphically and demonstrate that a free enterprise system leads to the best possible outcomes for all participants. The interaction of supply and demand leads to the optimal price given the relative value of all the resources exist. So, for example, in Gus's pie business, 
the equilibrium price or the market price in a free enterprise system represents the relative value of all the ingredients that go into making pies and the value of Gus's labor and the resources he uses to bake pies. Given these features of exchange and trade, the price system, and the interaction of supply and demand, the free enterprise system flourishes. This system is based on the millions and millions of individuals pursuing their unique purposes and plans, acting individually without anyone directing them. Adam Smith called this the invisible hand. When people are free, markets direct producers to provide what consumers desire with the goods and services that are available. And collectively, the result is that these actions of individuals pursuing their own desires benefit society as a whole more than any individual or group such as government could do if they intentionally sought to fulfill everyone's needs or desires.